Hi guys! So we are doing part two of the sequence tutorial today and uh, if you've been painting and drawing and stuff for a while I'm fairly certain that you can just watch this video alone for a couple of different ways to render sequins. If you're more of a beginner I highly recommend that you watch the first sequins tutorial first because I go over you know things to look out for when it comes to sequin fabrics and you know a real breakdown on uh, rendering them if you're super super beginner I highly recommend that you go watch my video on shiny fabrics and because with sequins it's really a matter of figuring out where to place your highlights to get the shine because sequins are basically a textured shiny fabric and if you are completely unfamiliar with my channel and my methods and my approach to illustration I recommend that you also watch making figures 3d with shadows with three kinds of shadow video right? and I'll link all of those below let's get started so the last video I showed you one method three different versions of that one method the second method I'm going to show you takes your shiny fabric and then add sequins to everything and this is a popular style for larger sequins for paillets it doesn't have to be but it's a look people like for that and people really like this type this method of rendering sequins for super freaking shiny sequins when they are not going for subtlety at all and they want it really loud and you know some styles the sparkle is really loud so depending on your swatch the effect that you're going for this could be the method of choice now method number two can be done with any medium you can just this sample I did this all in gouache basically you render the base color and the shadows leaving white of the paper for your highlights and then you take a darker color than your shadow and paint or draw or marker spots all over and then after that you take your white opaque wash and you fill in some of them not all of them you concentrate the white in the areas of the highlights and then you sprinkle some across so that you get a sprinkling of sparkle. And then you add your sparkle crosses. I'm going to do this method in color pencil. I'm using Prismacolors. And right now I have a violet blue, I have an indigo blue, and I have black. That's my light source. So my shadows are going to sit here and across here and under her bust. And so my highlights are going to be the top of her bust and along this side. The nice thing about color pencil is, you know, you can create soft edges, which is harder to do with marker. And, you know, you could do it with paint, but again, it is a little bit more difficult. It's really the easiest with color pencil. I'm creating those highlights on that thigh, along her side, and the top of her breasts. And then here's my indigo blue, and I'm going to add my shadows coloring more intensely and yeah if you do this with markers all you got to do is use your base fabric color to put in your fabric take a darker color put in your shadows when it comes to paint you guys know that my preferred method is to mix the shadow color and then deposit some of that in a separate well and then add water to lighten it up to create your base color.
Right, there's your shiny dress. Now I'm gonna take my black and I'm going to draw in all these sequins. And again, if your sequins have a pattern to them, you need to follow the pattern, whether it's in perfect rows, diagonal rows, you know, in the heart formation that we were looking at before. Yours doesn't have to be quite so big, but try to keep everything pretty consistent in shape and size and spacing. Remember, if you concentrate it only in one spot, it's going to look more like a designed space and not an all over fabric. And you just keep going until you fill in the space. After I've done this, sometimes I like to go in, punctuate the color with a little bit of burnishing, which is when you take the lighter color and you just kind of blend in your two colors by going over it strongly. You know, this is easier to do after you've placed your black dots. I'm still keeping my soft edges. You know, I'm all about maximizing the pros of each medium whenever, okay, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And now you're going to fill in your sequins that catch the light with white. Usually I do this with opaque white gouache, which is what I've done here. You can also do this with a white marker. Faber-Cassell makes this one, Pit Artist Pen in White 101. I have not seen anybody else create a white marker. I have had some success using a whiteout pen, you know, the kind where you shake it up and you kind of dip. But those are kind of uneven, so if you're in a pinch, maybe, but it's not my favorite method. I guess you could do this with gel pen. And if you were doing just a few, you could, but this seems super tedious to me. And I feel like it got tedious enough with the black. And you know me, I'm lazy. You know, I'm always gonna look for the easiest way to do things. And that does not look very easy to me. Okay, that was boring and I only did like seven of them. So here's the white marker. I'll go over the gel pen because it wasn't very opaque at all. And I'm concentrating the white sparkle bits in the areas where we have the original highlights because that's where the light is gonna hit and really make the sparkliest bits. And I'm just using this marker to stamp and I'm going to just sprinkle out some of the sparkle all the way across. If you don't find that this white marker is opaque enough, you know, maybe you could go back and hit it with another coat. And if that still is not opaque to your liking, then I would go with the opaque white gouache. The white gouache is always gonna be your brightest available white until you start getting into like acrylics and oils, which I mean, come on, are we really gonna? No, we are not. We're going to put in our sparkle crosses. And again, you could choose a white color pencil, a white gel pen, or your white gouache with a small brush. Again, make sure that your sparkle crosses are not on the white backdrop. Otherwise, you're not really gonna see them, are you? This one got a little crazy dramatic. This one I'm going to be sprinkling smaller, cuter, little sparkle crosses across her top. And there is method number two. Here is method number two done with marker and the white opaque wash. 
This red leg of her legging is done with method number one. So you guys can see the difference in the style. It's still, they both look like all over sequin fabrics. Okay, this one, I made the sequins much smaller than this one or this one, but still this one is a larger, sparklier, just more high impact sequin than this one. There's no right or wrong between these two. It's just what does your fabric look like and what kind of impact do you want to make? If you guys follow me on Instagram, then you'll have seen this picture posted um, last week, two, week, two weeks ago. This is an unfinished example of method number three. Now, the other samples that I showed you guys, the other two methods that I showed you guys, you can do in any media. And, but this one, you can only do in opaque wash because you're going to be putting lighter colors on top of darker colors. This method is focused on creating highlights and shadows using your sequins. So you will see here how my highlights are top of the shoulder, back of the arm, top of your forearm, top of your butt, backs of your thighs. And the highlights aren't created by highlighting underneath or leaving white space of the, leaving uh, the white of the paper underneath, but making them with individual white sequins. And then I mix a halo color, remember that transition color in between the fabric color and white, and I painted sequins all around my highlights. And then I mixed up two different shadow colors and I placed them in the shadow areas to create the shadows. This is a really great way of doing more intricate patterns. I like this method to create more subtle sequins, more matte sequins. I mean, you can make this look really blingy too, but this is a great way to do it less sparkly. Here's another one I did a while ago where it, I have the green of the dress, I have darker green shadows, I have white sequins, I have light green halo sequins, and then I have two different colors of shadow sequins. I already got started earlier and I drew this big boxy tunic t-shirt. I colored in my base color. I painted in the shadows using a more opaque gouache. You know, when it comes to painting sequins, people think that they need the teeny tiniest little brush and they want to use something like this. No. It's really about getting the right paint consistency so that you're forming paint droplets. You don't want to paint individual circles because that is super tedious and it'll take too long. And you know how I feel about things taking too long. You're going to take your white wash and you're going to add just enough water to it so that you can create a water droplet consistency, but keep it opaque enough that you're going to cover the background fabric color. So my light source is over here. So this shoulder... Students who have a difficult time figuring out their highlight shapes like this method because you can slowly figure out where to place your highlights by just adding a little bit more highlight with your individual little dots. Notice I'm trying to keep them pretty uniform in shape and size. I'm following the green of the t-shirt, okay, and I'm creating my highlight shapes. And then I'm going to need my halo color, so I'm gonna take a little bit of that hot pink, gorgeous color, and I'm going to add it to my white. 
Now, one of the things I really love about this method is you can use as many colors as you want. So you can do a real gradual transition, just like how you do a soft blend with the color pencils that you have no harsh lines. You can make as many halo colors or in between your fabric and white as much as you want so that you get a gradual uh, highlight as opposed to just kind of more graphic blocks. See, now the paint is too dry and I'm making myself form these lines. So I'm gonna add more water to my paint so that again, I'm more forming droplets instead of trying to paint individual dots. I'm using a round size two. Yeah, I've got enough liquid consistency so that I'm forming droplets now. Side note, guys, I got a pro tip for you. Don't ever drink your paint water. The best way to avoid drinking your paint water is to use two things that are very, very different from each other. Giant clear glass jar versus much smaller, colorful mug. Also, do not stick your brush in your coffee. I mean, that is a waste of coffee. You guys know how I feel about coffee. If you guys are finding that your wash tubes are drying up a little bit and hard to open, don't use your teeth. I see students in class doing this thing. I'm like, oh, stop. Those teeth have to last you your entire life. Get a cheap one at the tool store. I carry a, a much smaller, lighter pair in my my traveling toolkit and then I keep the heavy one at home but yeah don't oh, don't use your teeth I just got this new brush in my sketch box let's try it out I've got my very opaque rose Tyrion. I've got a tiny bit of black again I gotta add a lot of water so that I'm getting that drop consistency Always add a little bit at a time, you know, working slowly and methodically and doing things correctly the first time around actually saves a lot more time than, you know, working really fast and then messing up and then trying it all and doing it all over again. Okay, so the color is good. And so I'm going to go in my shadow areas and drop in my sequins. And again, you can use as many shadow colors as you want. You know, I like to drop a bunch of these, let things dry, see how things look after they're dry, and then proceed from there. I mentioned before that this is unfinished because there are a lot of blank spaces. I don't think you have to fill in the whole thing, okay? I would say that, like, her butt and her upper arm are complete. Okay. Like you have all these empty spaces here, but you have enough sequins where it looks all over. If I were still working on this, I would add a few here and I would add a few here. But other than that, I would leave it alone. Here's another one I did, this second dress. I would say that is complete. You have a, a little empty space here, here, here but it's all over enough where it looks like it's all over sequins and of course sparkle crosses here's another example that i did that i don't like because all of my sequins are dry misshapen they look like little dash marks they don't look like nice round sequins and the paint consistency is all over the place and blobby and this shadow this first shadow is too dark this is an excellent example of all the things not to do and that's method number three and you can make it as shiny or as matte as you want using lots of highlights or a little bit of highlights you can make things look less shiny by not using pure white but just using lighter colors instead um, you can make things super blingy by adding lots of sparkle crosses or you can use just very subtle little sparkle crosses or you can make 
all kinds of patterns. You can make them look bigger like paillets, or you can make them look super teeny tiny like the teeny tiny little beads I showed you guys uh, in the first video. So all of those things are variable according to the colors that you use, the size of the dots, and where you place them. But this is the basic method, creating your highlights and your shadows, painting in individual sequence. If you have a question, check my info box. If it's not there, then drop me a comment below. The queue currently is at late January. So if you leave me a subscriber request in late April, early May, it will not be filled until February because I always go in the order of the date requested. Nobody jumps the queue. Have fun with all the sparkle things. Go practice. Remember, hashtag always be practicing. Okay, we're going to make that a thing now. <laughs> go have fun. Go practice. And I will see you next time.